Hi. Is it working? <laughs> yes. Hi, my name is Louise Clark and today I want to talk to you about the homeless versus uh, refugee situation we've got here in the UK. And I'm aware that it's happening all over Europe and in America too, but I only really know UK and England because that's where I've grown up. So what I wanted to talk about is because it's like before the refugees, let's get real, right? <laughs> before the refugee issue became an issue, the homeless were, no, one's, no one really cared. It was like, yeah, they will say they cared and maybe people did fight, and, but it wasn't a big issue for my for main, 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 main public. But because of the refugee and how the refugees are being housed in hotels and in all obscure and highly expensive ways, uh, obviously people were aware, well, wait a minute, we've got homeless people on the street. And during COVID, they had no problem housing them in hotels, or was that to get us ready for using hotels? Because, here's the thing, it's like, yes, the refugees, they've got their issues, the homeless shouldn't be homeless. I mean, the bottom line is, homeless, when I was a child, there was no homeless. Like, I was a child in the 60s. There was no homeless people then. The only people that was on the streets were what we called tramps. And whether that's right or wrong, that's what we were told they were. And they were people that had a mental health issue where they'd been in institutionalised and in them days they'd got out of this guy, R.D. Lang, who thought, oh, strip them all of their belongings, personality, everything, and rebuild them. It didn't work, but it resulted in people carrying everything with them to have some sort of possession, to have something that gave them an identity, so they all carried their bags. So they were the only people, and I think if they wanted to be housed, they probably would have been housed. Now, there wasn't homeless. And then in the 80s, when I was a student, I remember, like, on low income, and what you did was just go and view the property that was for rent, uh, got a letter from the landlord to take to the council, and they gave you the deposit if you didn't have enough money for the deposit. And a deposit is really all that the issue is here, isn't it? Because... I don't know why they stopped the deposit, and I know they do think ahead, but I don't know why they stopped it. They stopped it. Well, it's a very cheap option, really, because it's like, let's say it's a £1,000, £2,000, and then that person's housed. And that's the only difference between them and me, is I have a deposit, and they didn't. And then there's the red tape, but red tape you can get round, because that's just red tape. You just rewrite it, according to need. So, when it comes to, it's as if they're playing the like it's like West Wine people and like, let's put them in the expensive hotels and pay millions when the end of the day all you've got to do is give the refugees a deposit that's my dog he agrees you've just got to give the refugees a deposit haven't you and then they've got they can go in private now they say oh there's not enough properties not enough places for them but there is because if you look online you can find property, as long as you've got money for a deposit, there's properties. Now, they've just put all the refugees in a village that's got about 200 houses, I don't know, I don't know all the facts, but I know they've got very few houses, and it's like, oh, let's put 200 more refugees there, when there's no houses that it can ever be sort of absorbed into. Well, yeah, that's going to cause a kerfuffle, isn't it? Because there's not, it's not possible, but in a city, if they put them in a city, then they could pay for the private rent in, like the people who can afford it so it's like and it's only down to a deposit and it's the loads cheaper so why are we wasting millions on hotels when there's private properties for rent now also i'm seeing now oh they're putting everyone on the barges right oh, we put them all on the barges in the middle of nowhere and again it raises suspicion in me because it's like they're going on about ai and uh, they say, now I make this video to go, but this is how it's going. They're going on about AI and, like, if we remove AI... Oh, sorry, AI is coming and, like, it's going to take over everything. And it would just mean that we don't have to do much. And we can just watch telly or do exercise. But we're just cattle, really, let's get real. So it's really, once they ache, do they need so much cattle? So my concerns are there, because when you're looking at... I'll put them all on a barge in them boxes 
and then they don't have to stay on the barge in the boxes they can leave so you probably if you've got an uncle somewhere go and leave and stay at your uncle's so then that makes that but the thing is the barge is built isn't it and if you was in the future to want to detain like the homeless like if there was another covid say you've got ready-made boats haven't you for the task and they're telling you online today i see oh i saw a headline oh a lovely hotel lovely oh you'd love to live there in a barge on a barge in a box and the thing is it's like yeah when i don't know all history but there'll be people that do and you can research it is there was issues with like boats, it's like Rothschild territory, and maybe I shouldn't say it, but I will say it, because they owned boats, and then when there was a change in like, I don't know how business ran, they had to find another way of using their boats. And really, I don't know if they own the barges, I don't know who owns the barges, it's worth looking into, because there's a lot of money to be made on that barge that wouldn't be going anywhere, it's environmentally friendly because it sits in a dock all day long, and you can have as many as you like, because if you're going to reduce the environmental damage of, by boats, then you're going to have to moor them somewhere and you're going to have to use them in some form or fashion. So you could homeless, do all the homeless. But I don't trust it, if I'm really, really honest, because it's a bit like, if you can... See, the thing is, they've done the ben benches, right? It's another thing. No benches anywhere. Like, you go through your town, no, all the benches have been removed. And so, if you want a cup of coffee, that's fine. You can sit in a coffee shop or have something to eat. If you haven't got any money or you don't fancy them things, what are you meant to do? If you're disabled and elderly and want to sit down, you can't. There's nowhere to sit because they've removed all the seats. The youth sit, like, on the pavement, but we can't all sit on the pavement. And it's like, you've removed the seats. So why have you removed the seats? they removed the seats to persecute the homeless. And that's what I'm seeing is it's illegal to be homeless here or something because of vagrancy laws. And it's like, that's all wrong. That's all out of date and back to front. Because at the end of the day, basic needs, when you look in psychology, you'll come across Maslow and Maslow's theory of needs, a hierarchy of needs. And the baseline, the basic need is food, water and shelter. Then the next one is security. But the first one is shelter. And I think as a first world country, we should be providing shelter. And there is enough houses if you give people deposits. So you've got a solution, but you don't want to remember that solution because then you could solve that with the homeless. And the thing is, you're going to, like, they try to sort of demonise, like, make homeless people like lepers. So they'll show you, I saw this week, old oh, monkey, duck, and they'll show you them a mess. And it's, that's not all homeless people. And even if it is, some of them, so what's their destiny? So we're just going to leave them there to rot? Or are we going to put them on these boats once the refugees go and get a job or do whatever they do? And then it's like, I know it's going to be endless because I had a look online because there used to be detention centres in Greece and Turkey that they'd put the homeless in or the drug users and then they'd have to go to their regime and then they could be housed and all this. And it's like, I looked online to see what's happening with them and they said they've got 4 million refugees in Turkey. They're waiting to move on. So this is just going to keep constantly going. But the bottom line is it's cheaper with a deposit. Uh, so it's about human rights, really. And I'm not into, like, communism and adult, right? I, you know, we've got to have a chance. But I think you have to have basics. I think, a, 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 especially a first world country, needs to provide basics, needs to provide some form of her uh, shelter for their people, right, and f basic food needs and water needs. That's basics, and I think that should be provided. And instead they're not. They're, like, passing the buck, right, because they used to pay for the deposits. Now they pass it. It's all charities, and charities are not really pulling it off and probably never will. And it's not really in their capacity. I mean, some charities, it's disgusting. It's like children's hospice, and they've got them as a charity. What's that doing as a charity? shouldn't be a charity. Weren't charities years ago, the government was part of it. So I don't know what the government spends their money on now, but it's not on things like children's hospitals or homes and things like that. So I know, yeah, he said yesterday, isn't it, Richie Zunak, oh, he's going to build some more. Yeah, well, we've already got the houses. Give us the deposits for, for people. And then they can be housed, and it's cheap. And then you won't be having to be like, play the refugees against the homeless in this, so that we hate each other and don't see the puppeteer at the top 
pulling the strings and making a lot of money. And they're probably going to make a lot of money out of the boats. And it's even like the Ministry of Defence. I'm sorry, I don't trust it. It's like there's all asbestos in Kent. They're cleaning them up, 20 million. And they're going to make all these little huts for the refugees. But you know, once this is... Then that's where they're going to be... If they did, like, go where they planned in the New World Order, or they could... They don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. But the plans are to sort of remove the, the unnecessary people. And it's, and it's a way you do it. It's like you, you, you first come for, like the homeless, the people who are isolated that no one would notice they've gone, put them all on the boats and then they disappear, don't they? Because no one knows who's on the boats, do they? And so you could do the homeless and then they do the drug users and then you can do another group, disabled or the elderly, and people say they're already doing the elderly. But this is how it works. And I mean, they're telling you, oh, you're going to have a lovely life now, the AI, you're going to just relax. And No, you're not. That's like, to me, I could be totally wrong and I hope I am. But in my mind, my crazy mind, it's like, well, the Nazis, when they had the concentration camps, they didn't say, come, let's slaughter you. They said, come to our promised land or something to that effect. And then the people come. And then they killed them. And I see the same sort of gameplay. And it's like, why you fight against each other? And I could be totally wrong. I don't want to be striped or all that. I don't know what the rules are. But all I know is that, like, these things can be addressed, can be resolved with deposits, right, instead of making us fight. But it's a good way to, because then if we can be like, yes, yeah, all right for them to be in a barge, they're refugees, right? <laughs> it's like, if it's all right for them to be in a, it's all right for the homeless, then it's all right for the, anyone that we want to just put in a barge. So, you know, you have to be careful with these things of just, oh, yeah, that's that, because... It's like it's, there's a play going on. It's like they're putting them all in the little villages where there's not enough houses. Put them in a the city, it'd be fine. So, I don't know if I've covered everything I want to cover, but I've been going over in my head what I can say and what I can't say. I mean, I've done the Maslow. Women's Aid, again, it's like Women's Aid, they provide for women that are fleeing domestic violence, but any woman that's on the street is at risk of <laughs> violence that night. So she should be able to go to Women's Aid. Women's Aid's a charity. Again, it's like it shouldn't really be a charity, but that's how they steered it from the 90s. In the 90s, it wasn't like that, but I knew the plans were to steer it all, that everything became charity. And I and when I was told that, was, oh, well, that won't happen, but it did happen, doesn't it? So, but it's like, no. And then the, the persecution of the homeless, it's like with the benches making them impossible to sleep on, making them out of concrete and metal at the expense of, don't matter about the disabled and the elderly and anyone who just wants to sit down because you can't do the whole limp from one bus stop to the next. It's like, no. Um, now, also, I did post on Twitter a few months back, I found that Tony Blair and his wife, they had done some deals with Albania regarding all this and I've got the links and I'll put them in the description because I can't remember all what I read of it. But it's like, no, it's all... Everyone's making money while they're pitting the homeless against the refugees. You know, you pit the bo can't be racist, so they just go against other groups. But it doesn't really matter because they just practice on them groups. Because if you're going to take it that, oh, yeah, let's punish the refugees or let's punish the homeless, let's, that's good enough for them, then, believe me, it's going to be good enough for most in the end. So... All I've seen is data collection, data collection, data collection. And everything wants data. And it's like, no, that's all they're interested in now. Uh, tighter rules. You know, gradually you can't park. Less and less places you can park. People that are choosing to live in a van. Less and less places to park them vans. Um, and they'll make it more and more expensive to have these things. Um, and, well, what else can I say? Um, I think I've covered it all. I thought it would take forever, um, but sometimes you think it'll take forever because it felt like a massive issue, so it took me about a week or so to even put it together, um, to know what was put in it. So... <laughs> uh, yes. Um... It's, it's, it's all wrong. It's like it's like all the, oh, we, we can house the people from Ukraine, but not the ones that are not white. they got to go Rwanda. That's all wrong. 
and it's all just to incite us all so we all can be like pick a side and fight each other while they're making money and got plans to use I think they've got plans to use them things and I don't know if I'm right or wrong and I really hope I'm wrong but I really don't think I am so I think that yes homeless people need basic human rights it's like equal rights for all not some for refugees whatever the refugees have got we want the same for homeless people that's what we want yeah, we don't want to hate the refugees or like the refugees, nothing to do with it. Same rights, same rights for homeless people as you give in to others. And they don't really need the hotels. Because um, then that ruins the whole tourist industry. And it is, it's as if they're trying to destroy all the infrastructures that we've got. Because they don't need them no more, really. They've got their own, they've got their private. Um, so I feel... The, this is the answer, is to give um, give basic human rights to all and <laughs> a deposit. So, you need to start there. And yeah, if you, you may think, because I'll go ahead in the plan, oh, well then we're going to run out if you keep giving everyone deposits. But you won't, because then you can still re rebuild. There's lots of land, there's lots of space, there is. And uh, it's no, you know, they're planning on building anyway. But it, while you're building give deposits and then all those vacancies that are available in the cities and there's places like up north I'm not saying put everyone up north but it's like there's places that are so cheap and it's like put some they're rebuilt they're built so do them up make it work make it work spend the same money that you're spending on pissing boats and Ministry of Defence huts derelict huts and it, it'll just be like you get the money for the building and huts and the asbestos clearance alright Bert we'll give you the money we're all in it to... No. No, no, no. Deposit. That's all. That's all you need. So, all those that can remember, years ago, we didn't have homeless, right? And uh, got deposits. And there was no problem. And I don't know why they still stopped them. I'll put the links below that I think uh, relate to this, about the camps I'll do, and the Blair. And I hope I've made my point clear. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.